45 miles an hour, pure electric power, or at the touch of a button, <laughs> 456 horsepower. Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to the brand new Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo E-Hybrid. Roll the titles. Now I don't normally park cars this way round on my driveway when I'm doing a review, but I have done for this car because I think this has the best looking rear of certainly any Porsche, but I just think it looks excellent. How they've gone from the first gen Panamera, which let's face it, wasn't a pretty animal, to this thing, I think this looks stunning. I might even think it's maybe the most certainly the most uh, functional and attractive looking Porsche in the range. I just think it looks wicked. So when I uh, approached Porsche Centre Portsmouth um, and said, um, you know, can I do a film on the Panamera Sport Turismo? They said, yeah, of course you can. We've got a couple, which would you like to choose? Um, I decided to choose the e-hybrid for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, I think it's quite an interesting format and I've driven a couple of Porsche e-hybrid cars before. The first gen Panamera, which didn't impress me at all, and the KN. Um, SE hybrid, which again wasn't that impressive, but I've heard very, very good things about this car, um, so I thought it might make an interesting mix because I personally think this car is going to be several cars in one. start this review under the bonnet. So underneath here we've got a 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo petrol engine and uh, electric hybrid power. Now the, the outstanding performance figure is 456 bhp and 516 foot-pounds of torque. So this is a very very rapid car but it has so many different driving modes. It's actually quite complex. I'm not sure this video is gonna be long enough to talk about all of them. You can run it on pure electric power only. You can have it running as a, an electric petrol hybrid or where it's maybe most deployable is the electric assistance when you put it into sport and sport plus mode to make this car go ballistically quickly. Um, the fuel economy figures, we'll talk about what's quoted and what you'll actually get. Um, but it's, it's this engine is an absolute tour de force and, and I've not been driving it for very long. And it's coupled to perhaps the best gearbox on the market, Porsche's eight speed twin clutch PDK gearbox. Absolutely brilliant thing. So let's go inside and have a chat about some of these different driving modes. I honestly think that the Panamera interior is one of the best interiors out there at the moment. The kind of touch screen centre console in this car is just magnificent and, and we can start to see that coming through the Porsche range. So talking to the guys this morning when I picked the car up, the new KN has that. You've probably seen uh, some videos about that already. Um, and then the 992, so the, the new 911 that comes out towards the end of this year, it's going to have it also. Um, and it just makes managing the car um, really, really straightforward. And believe me, managing the car is probably a really good <laughs> word to use because it's a very complex thing. So let's have a look at some of these driving modes. So currently we're in e-power, that's pure electric power. Um, I've currently got another 13 miles of range. I've then got the ability to go into hybrid auto. So that's where the internal combustion engine and electric work together. And then I've got these two options here, e-hold, basically so battery charge will be kept at the current level. Um, so um, I guess if you're using urban driving and then e-charge um, that's when the battery is charging and you'll have noticed that the engines just kicked in there so I basically got the engine not only powering the car but also powering the um, uh, charging of the battery and then I've got sport um, and sport plus uh, which that's where the hybrid starts to um, work with the internal combustion engine to give better performance The 
more you drive this car, the more you start to fall in love with this central console. It's so well designed. Um, so if we just plonk it back to the to main car setting, you can control all the various drive modes from here. There are shortcuts on here, but what I love about this panel, not only is it in a lovely gloss black finish, but it has also a a haptic to it so it, it looks flat but when you push and it's just got that tactile feedback which makes it really really usable and the danger in this car is that there are so many things that you can set and play with um, from you know setting obviously the different driving modes things like sticking your sports exhaust on your spoiler on the roof changing your chassis settings um, you can got normal sport and sport plus and you've got these lovely graphics of the car to go with it um, so all of these things are um, you know you can even control this the vents which I just think is absolutely you won't be able to see that but these vents are moving <laughs> it's just so cool <laughs> So the whole point for me about this car, which makes it so interesting as a desirable car, is the form factor of this, I wouldn't quite call it an estate, it's more like a shooting brake. I love the deployable rear spoiler on the roof, which is pretty cool, but let's have a look inside and just see how much space we've got, because it's not quite as big as you think it's going to be. So it's not gigantic in here, not, not comparable with something like, I don't know, an, an Audi A6 or, a, or even if you think about the KN, the, the kind of big, big boot space, but it's quite a good amount of space. What I've also got in here at the moment is the plug-in hybrid cable um, unit, which is here. You would probably keep this, I guess, in your garage. It's quite a hefty unit, that, to be fair. And then I've also got droppable rear seats, but quite interesting configuration um, because the, you've got the two seats either side and then this central section you can drop independently. So it's a bit like a ski hatch, I guess. And then you can drop the two seats either side. There's a little button here you can just drop and the, and the seat drops. Uh, so lots of usable, configurable space. With all the seats down, you've actually got quite a large amount of load space here. But if you had passengers, I guess where this car comes into its own is it gives you a really lovely long distance autobahn munching car with four adults and enough luggage for those four adults as well. And in this particular car, those adults that sit in the rear are going to have a lovely time because there's some brilliant stuff that's been specced in the rear. Let's jump in and have a look. Now then, normally when I test drive a car, it's that seat I want to be sat in, not this one. But every now and again, you get in a car and the rear seat and the kind of comfort you've got just makes you think, oh, I'd really like to sit in here for a long journey. These seats are super, super comfy. They're like little mini bucket seats for the rear passenger. I think they look stunning as well. This car's been spec with the rear seat entertainment system. So I've got a screen there to watch movies on and as I'm blasting through uh, France on the auto route. I've actually also got my own um, climate control zone, again, with that lovely gloss black finish uh, touch screen with a little haptic. It's really nice, I've got loads and loads of legroom, loads of headroom, panoramic glass roof, so it's really light in here. But if I want to have a bit of a snooze, I guess I can kind of pull that screen back and I've got a nice sunscreen there. Put that up, sit back, watch a movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is a good place to do a long journey. So, Let's start our test drive in the only way possible, which is full electric mode. And I've driven a number of electric vehicles now and it still freaks me out completely. When I got in this this morning at Porsche Portsmouth, I kind of turned it on and nothing happened. And there was no noise or anything. And then I remind yourself, aha, you know, I was expecting a big throaty V6 to bark into life. And you forget, these. this starts by default in full EV mode. Um, and, and actually, I drove up to my local shops in Chichester um, earlier on today, and I went all the way there and all the way back. It's probably about seven or eight miles each way, um, and I did that on complete electric power. The ICU didn't kick in at all, and it is a bit weird, but very usable. As I said, you can you can do you know normal speeds on a on a B class road absolutely quite happily.
perfectly quiet, silky smooth, full electric power. And actually, if you were using this in urban driving, so city driving, I can well imagine you would be in this um, e-power mode, certainly for short journeys. You don't have oodles of range, you know, 30 odd miles of range in, in optimum conditions. And I can imagine that probably nowhere near that in the real world, but it's certainly usable. However, as soon as you accelerate a little bit harder than you, and there we go, there's the ICU kicked in, and we're now in a hybrid mode. Even though the car is still set in e-power, it, it kind of says, look, I can't deal with the performance you're expecting of me. I'm gonna get the ICU to help out a little bit. And now we're driving with a, a, a hybrid car. So out on the road then, this is a very heavy car when you think about it, it's 2,100, well, over 2,100 kilos, thanks to all that battery packs and, uh, and hybrid um, equipment. It is a heavy car, but it, for me, it doesn't translate into the driving experience. It's got a beautiful steering feel, um, and uh, it just doesn't feel like a, an uber heavy car. So I've dropped into a 30 mile an hour limit, and it's dropped back down to electric power only. So I'm tootling along at 30 miles an hour. ICU switched itself off. So, you know, I guess I'm doing zero gallons per mile right now. Now, let's have a chat about MPG. Clearly, if you're using this hybrid mode and you're using electric power only mode a lot, that's gonna extend your miles per gallon significantly. As soon as the ICU kicks in, as soon as you start pushing on, then the MPG isn't quite as dramatic as you would expect. Porsche quote, well in excess of 100 miles per gallon uh, combined cycle for this car. Um, my averages I've been getting on all the various readings I've got on this car are less than 20. Not 120, 20. So you start putting it in sport or sport plus mode, then that fuel economy is going to creep up just a little bit. So maybe we need to think about this car more as electrical assistance performance rather than pure EV you know, uh, Tesla Model X territory. Reminds me of that Simon and Garfunkel song, uh, Sound of Silence. So here we are tootling along, ICU kicks in, let's have a play. I'm gonna put it in sport mode. I've got the sports exhaust button on. I'm gonna knock it into manual in this superb PDK box and That's more like it! It's got a turn of pace, this car, that's for sure. It really does have a beautiful, smooth acceleration. And that's just in the sport mode. Now, the other thing, chassis control, I actually prefer it. It's got uh, normal sport and sport plus chassis. I think the normal chassis setting in this car is beautiful. It's like a carpet ride. So if we just pop up into this corner, we'll just drop it down a couple of cogs down into fourth, down into third, turn it in, lovely front end, and you'll recognize this road. It is, it's a brilliant car. It doesn't feel nearly as big as it is. You know, this car's longer than a KN, I think, but it's manners on the road. It's got such lovely poise, greasy road surface, down a cock into second. <laughs> this is where it comes alive. Yes, the hybrid's cool for pootling around town. Yes, I can imagine you'd use that quite a lot, but get it out on an open road and this car just urges you to push on and drive quickly and it really doesn't feel like a hybrid at all. You've just got a really sporty, responsive petrol V6 under your right foot. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> so you just lift off a little bit and you've got these burbles out the back of the car. I have to say the sports exhaust on this car sounds absolutely brilliant. So I think the next thing it would be rude not to, we'll, we'll be sticking it up into Sport Plus mode. 
sharpens things up, you've just got the ultimate performance of this car now. Excellent gearbox, as always, in the Porsche PDK. And I love this bit of road. It's just got a beautiful feeling through the steering, this car. Lovely balance. Firm steering, it's not light at all, it's firm but, but meaningful. Gearbox is really responsive every now and again. If you ask it to go down too early, it'll just hesitate a moment and then tiny bit of traction control out the corner there. But just a very, very competent car. And you instantly forget you're in such a big car and remember you are in a Porsche. And the dynamics of driving a Porsche are always so special. I can't believe I lasted so long in my driving career before ever getting behind the wheel of one. And I've now been very lucky. I've driven pretty much every car that they've got, apart from the 918 Spider, but maybe that will happen one day, you never know. Only one thing for it, 0 to 60 test. Now this car has launch control, so I'm in Sport Plus, left foot on the brake, bury my right foot, drop my left foot, off we go. Three, two, one, go. Sixty. That was impressive. So now we've had a bit of a play in all the different modes. It's safe to say the performance of this car is staggering. Comfort levels and tech levels are fantastic. Is there anything I don't like about the car? Well, the number one thing I don't like about this car is the price because that means I can't afford one. Now these cars, they kind of start at around the kind of 80, 85,000 pound mark. But you start ticking your boxes like they've done on this demonstrator, this car is circa £120,000. And that goes up to about £130,000, £140,000 if you go through the range. One very little niggle with the gearbox. When you're changing down, if I go third into second, when you go down into first, it's a real jerky kind of change down into first when you're on the on the paddles. Apart from that, there's not a great deal about this car I don't like. So, what are my final impressions of this car? Well, <laughs> it's really, really impressed me, I have to say. I knew I'd like it. I loved the new Panamera when I drove that last year. And this car has this balance of, of usable economy and green friendly hybridness. But when you put your foot on the loud pedal, man, is it quick. It has super, super road holding. And what I really like about it is I'm not a massive fan of the whole hybrid thing. But when you put it into a corner, and here we go, out of this corner, into national speed limit, boom! When you put your foot on the loud pedal, this thing shifts. But what I really like about it is the hybrid element of the car is so much more usable than Porsche hybrids I've driven before. I can quite easily see this car being, if you were just doing short journeys, either urban driving, for Mrs. Petroped, I can see it being really useful. She does lots and lots of short journeys throughout the day, driving in the kind of Chichester area. And if you had a car like this, most of those journeys would probably be on electric power only, and you wouldn't be using any petrol at all. And yet when you get in it and you want to do a longer journey, you're not gonna be driving this car um, put it back into hybrid actually you're not going to be driving this car on electric power that much on a longer journey but what it is going to be doing is adding to the performance of the vehicle and believe me in sport and sport plus the dynamics of this car are absolutely brilliant and it, it just 
it, it, I don't know how it feels like such a sporty, nimble, little car when it's such a big, heavy car. It's, it's phenomenal. So I have to say a huge thank you to Porsche Centre Portsmouth. They invited me to the Sport Turismo launch last year. And when we were there, I talked to them and said, you know, when you've got a demonstrator in and there's a convenient time, can I have one? And they were like, absolutely yes. Um, and I'm already talking to them about the new KN and they're going to do a launch event there, which hopefully I'm going to get invited to. So hopefully lots more Porsche content coming. Thanks to the guys at Porsche Centre Portsmouth. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I, I kind of wanted to play a little bit with this e-hybrid just to see just how much they're coming on. And believe me, hugely impressive. So anyway, if you've enjoyed the film, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. But I will see you on the next film, guys. Anyway, you take care. Drive safe.